Here to discuss what's been going on in the overall economy and more is Professor of Economic Emeritus at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Richard Wolf. Professor, great to have you back again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. So uh, I have this theory, and it's not some learned theory that I would learn in a class that you teach, certainly, but it involves reasons for major market moves like this that we've seen in the last 24 hours. And my theory is that folks on TV, radio, and investment advisors who we pay if we make an investment, they always have to have a reason. They have to come up with some reason. Otherwise, what are you watching them for? What are you paying them for? Uh, and they have to have some sort of answer. But if you are in the financial sector, I guess you don't know everything, even though you act like it. So my question to you you is, you know, is that something that makes some sense? And do you happen to have some reason why these markets have taken such a terrible tumble yourself, Professor? Well, I think your insight is absolutely right. Uh, some people have to have an explanation for everything uh, because their situation, their income depends on it. Let me start with uh, President Trump. His job depends on it, so, as usual, he has found someone other than himself to blame. Whenever anything good comes about, he's, of course, responsible for it. And when something bad, like the stock market crash yesterday, happens, it is somebody else, so he blames the Federal Reserve. A student who answered that quickly, in that simple-minded a way, would get a very poor grade in economics from any professor that I've ever met. So let's put that one aside. Typically, a downturn is a result of many different things, and each one has its own particular story to tell. What's interesting is not so much this or that cause, this time it's more important, the other time a little less. What's really important to understand is we have an economic system that is fundamentally unstable. Everywhere that capitalism has settled in as the dominant system, starting in the 18th century in England and then spreading across the world, here's what we know. On average, every four to seven years, there's a downturn. Some of them are short and shallow, others are long and deep. 1929 was terribly long and deep. 2008, terribly long and deep. No one knows the details but we know that if the last bottom in this country was in 2009 and 10, which it was, and you add four to seven to that, we are, as even the president admitted, we've been due for one for a year and a half, and the only question was what would set it off, yesterday's events or yet something to come. One last point. The largest bank in the United States, J.P. Morgan Chase, has officially predicted that early in the year 2020 will be the next downturn. Now, that's a little silly. Nobody knows exactly. But it gives you an idea that even the biggest, most established thinkers know that with the regularity of our instability, if it isn't this one, it'll be one next month or next year, and then there will be millions of people out of work, economic downturn, and in our volatile society, Lord knows where that will take us. Absolutely. So insightful, Professor. Uh, that's why we love having you on. And as you mentioned, you know, the president did, he said, he admitted we are expecting a correction. Now, you know, it, it, Monday morning quarterbacking, but if he were, if we he were really expecting a correction, and if he had said so, say three days ago, then the markets would have taken a turn. Which brings me to him, your, your, the, him saying, as you say, uh, using the Fed as a scapegoat. I mean, saying that the Fed's actions were crazy, uh, we forget that the Fed chair is President Trump's own pick, Jay Powell. He's his guy. And so uh, earlier today, Larry Kudlow, the director of national economics, the, the president's top economic guy, comes out and he says, no, we're not directing the Fed. We're not complaining about the Fed. But he's sort of like the proverbial guy cleaning up after the elephants in the parade, trying to make things better. I mean, 
these are supposed to be independent agencies. I was at a regulate, re regulatory body that was independent, but the president's treating them like it's his own special whipping boy and girl. Uh, it doesn't seem right in my view. What's your thought? Well, the tradition has certainly been that presidents are not supposed to interfere in what the independent Federal Reserve System, led by Mr. Powell, does in this kind of situation. This country has produced an increase in the quantity of money in circulation to respond to the crash of 2008 that is unprecedented in our history. And the Federal Reserve, quite predictably, anxious about what might happen if that money starts to chase goods and services, what kind of boom in prices, inflation it might start, is taking prudent steps that they normally do to hold the situation back. Whether you agree or not, there's nothing crazy, there's nothing unusual. The only reason President Trump doesn't like it is if you raise interest rates, you make it more expensive to borrow money. People will therefore not be able to borrow as cheaply as they did before to get a home or to buy a car or to use their credit card or to pay for their kids' education. And that's going to upset people. And Mr. Trump is afraid he will be blamed as people discover economic difficulties since he's been promising to make America great again any time early next week to the mass of the American people. So he doesn't want it now. He wants it to happen maybe after the election in November. That's all this is about. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Let me ask you this, uh, Professor. Do you think that we are, uh, one, safer than we were back in 2008, and two, if there is a, another, I mean, there's going to be a downturn in the market. I mean, it's like the rain. Sometimes it's going to happen. But what do you think that market turn downward might be, and when might it be? Well, I, I like the prediction of the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Uh, it seems to me that somewhere in the next 4, 6, 12, 18 months, we're going to have a downturn. I don't think there's a question about that. The exact timing, no one can do. So the real question, as you rightly put it, is how bad will it be? How deep will it go? How long will it last? Which is the question we ask all the time. Now, here's my concern. Crises in the capitalist system tend to be worse the longer we've waited from the last one. We're now beyond our four to seven average range, so that's an argument that it will be worse. Number two, because of the last crash and the decision of the Federal Reserve that both Republicans and Democrats supported to bring interest rates down to flood the economy with money, interest has been very low. Governments, therefore, have borrowed like never before. Corporations have borrowed like never before. And individuals have come back from the crisis of 2008, borrowing ever more, particularly to send their kids to college at a time when future job opportunities are not so great. That is very dangerous, because what debts do when they pile up like this is they ramify any downturn. You get lose your job is bad enough. But if that means you can't pay all kinds of others that depend on being repaid, well, then it spreads like a wildfire. That's a bad sign also. And finally, Mr. Trump has to have the finger pointed at him because he has disrupted the world trade system in the world with his aggressive tariff posturing and posing and has undone world trade. The IMF last week told him that. So he's made that another problem on top of the economic downturn. So that's why people are scared. And when you begin to see what might be the moment, yesterday and today, then the stock market goes down because, as we used to call these things, panic sets in. And that's why that fear index, the volatility index, is so high. Professor Richard right. Wolf, uh, professor of economics emeritus at University of Massachusetts Amherst, thanks so much for your insight, professor. My pleasure. Thank you.